Hi everyone, I'm Nigel Bosch and today I'll be talking about our paper from Transactions on Computer-Human Interaction called Can Computers Outperform Humans in Detecting User Zone Outs? Implications for Intelligent Interfaces. So in this paper we were curious about mind wandering and its role in human-computer interaction. So mind wandering occurs when one involuntarily shifts attention away from the task at hand. Um, and this is very important for HCI tasks, uh, many types of tasks. For example, if you want to compare different types of uh, interface design elements to see what interface uh, might uh, reduce mind wandering compared to another. Or perhaps in uh, an educational scenario, for example, you could identify certain content that maybe uh, causes students to mind wander more than others or perhaps inform some kind of policy and procedure for how an interface is used by doing things like uh, maybe inserting breaks uh, for users if, um, if you reach a point where uh, users tend to start mind wandering on some kind of uh, attention critical task. Um, and there are many other possible um, scenarios where mind wandering is very relevant, but all of these uh, to a certain extent rely on uh, being able to measure mind wandering. So in this paper, we were really interested in, in that problem and in approaching it from uh, specifically from a visual uh, perspective. So I'm going to show you a few examples of uh, three different participants from our study where we uh, recorded videos of, of uh, what they looked like when they were mind wandering and they self-reported mind wandering as they were reading text on a, a computer screen. So there are three examples here, just some, uh, some frames from videos um, taken right before the, the moments where they self-reported mind wandering. And then we also showed these videos to um, a, a sample of uh, third party observers who gave justifications for why they thought they were mind wandering or not mind wandering. So in, in this case, the observers um, for all three of these videos um, talk about uh, zoning out or falling asleep, um, some themes that came up fairly frequently that we examined to try to get a, a sense of uh, what people perceive is mind wandering or not. Um, and in the non-mind wandering examples, uh, the, the participants tended to talk a lot more about uh, the eyes moving as if reading um, and uh, following the text or simply not uh, drifting away. So the, the research questions that we explored in this study uh, first focused on comparing uh, human third party observers in their ability to detect mind wandering um, versus um, automatic computer vision based methods. Um, and second, we uh, explored a fusion of those two, human and uh, machine predictions, to, uh, to determine whether that, um, that could be even uh, more accurate as a, a method of measurement. Um, and finally, we explored those, those visual cues uh, that observers use, as well as the, the cues that the computer was picking up on to try to get a sense of uh, what mind wandering looks like, or at least uh, what people and computers perceive mind wandering as. So for this project, uh, we first did a data collection with uh, users reading an electronic textbook um, and recorded the videos of their face and upper body. Uh, we then applied previously developed machine learning models to predict mind wandering. There's lots of details about, in, uh, about that in the paper if you're curious. And finally, uh, we collected the predictions from human observers. Then to analyze those data, we also applied uh, natural language processing to, uh, to try to figure out what uh, text from the observer's justifications was related to either uh, human or computer predictions of mind wandering and not mind wandering. So one of the things we explored was um, how many observers you need to achieve a, a reliable uh, sort of consensus prediction of mind wandering or not. Um, so we did a little pilot study to, to get a sense for that, to project the uh, reliability that we expected. And then we collected up to nine uh, observers and found that uh, indeed the reliability improved substantially, um, though it might be possible to achieve even better reliability in the future. Uh, so in the first research question, we were really uh, interested in comparing those observers to the computer predictions. So we did that by measuring the accuracy as, um, as measured via the area under the receiver operating characteristic curve, or AUC, which showed that the humans and the computers were pretty similar in their accuracy, but the humans were quite a bit better in the high precision, low recall area of the uh, ROC curve, and the computer, uh, vice versa, was uh, a bit better in the uh, high recall, low precision area. So in the first research question, we found 
overall. Um, their predictions were pretty similar, um, but uh, the observers in the computer were significantly better at different parts of the uh, different types of predictions, essentially. So in the second research question, we explored fusing those two sets of predictions, the human observers and the computer predictions. The fusion uh, accuracy was uh, significantly better than the observers and the computer. Uh, and we also explored how many observers we needed and found that uh, three or more observers were needed to significantly outperform the computer alone. Uh, and observing uh, case, only case, cases where the computer predicted mind wandering also significantly improved accuracy. So if we took only the uh, the subset of instances where the computer predicted mind wandering and had observers only look at those, uh, that was also significantly better than uh, using the computer alone. So in the third research question, we, uh, we dove into those justifications that uh, observers provided, uh, which serves as a sort of uh, textual summarization of what was going on in the video clips. So we looked first at the, um, the correlations between um, n-grams or um, uh, sets of consecutive words in those judgments versus the judgments that the observers themselves made. Uh, and we found that uh, observers were really looking at things like reading, following the text, uh, when they said that people were not mind-wandering, um, whereas they were more um, uh, looking at things like closing the eyes, perhaps uh, falling asleep when they judged that people were mind wandering. And then we applied the same method to look at what predicted computer uh, yes or no predictions regarding mind wandering. Uh, and the computer was picking up on different things, um, especially yawning, uh, rubbing the eyes, uh, and hand movement as well as body movement. Uh, for, for negative mind-wandering cases. For positive mind-wandering cases, the computer was picking up more on uh, blinking, following the text, um, and movement. Um, a little bit different than the, the most critical uh, or most correlated words that the human observers had. So some key implications for this. Um, in the first research question, we um, certainly uh, found that it's a mind-wandering detection is a very difficult task. But in the second research question, we did find that it's possible to work together with the computer and the humans to improve that accuracy. And in the third research question, uh, we found that the, the cues that computers and observers rely on are mostly complementary, which perhaps explains some of the, the advantages of fusing those two sources of predictions and also suggests future work uh, trying to extract more of what the observers were able to find from the videos to improve the computer predictions. So that's all that I have for you today. Please feel free to reach out uh, if, you're, if you're interested in this work, um, and you can check out our paper as well.